Hey guys. Okay, so lesson 1.5, honors and math seven. Okay, so for both, we're gonna be adding and subtracting rational numbers. Okay, if you don't remember what rational numbers is, go back and look in your notes, all right? So it says, essential question. How are adding and subtracting integers related to adding and subtracting rational numbers? Well, I will tell you, they are virtually the same. There's one difference though, and that is with these type of equations, we have to have the numbers in the same format. You're also gonna see here that there are plenty of different um, concepts that I've already taught you, strategies I've already taught you that you're gonna to have to apply here. So it's very important for you to evaluate each one of these equations before you go through and try to solve it. Okay guys, use the strategies I'm trying to help you develop. Okay, so here's the first thing. When I look at this, the first thing I see is in A, is that I have two signs, a plus and a minus sign, in between these two terms. I have to combine those. If you remember, if you flip back just a couple pages in your notes, a positive and a negative is going to be a negative. If the signs are different, they're negative. Okay. Here's the other one, though, and we haven't seen this yet. I've got a decimal here, and I've got a mixed number here. They have to both be in the same format for me to actually perform this um, addition problem or subtraction problem, okay? So the easiest case scenario, let's turn them both into decimals, okay? So here's my decimal here, a negative two and five tenths. We already determined that by combining these two signs, we're gonna have minus, okay? We have a whole number here, so I'm gonna write that whole number, and then I'm gonna put the decimal because this fraction is gonna be turned into a decimal. Now, here's the thing. If you know how to say decimals or fractions, then you know what they are when they're in this format. In other words, this says six tenths. You should be able to put that six tenths over there. But if you're not sure, here's what we do. We go six divided by 10, and what it does here is it gives you the decimal, 0 0.6, okay guys? So what we do is we put that 0.6 behind here. Okay guys, so we're gonna put it behind there. All right, now we have to do a little bit more, okay? I look at this and I see that I've got two terms. I would be starting at a negative two and five tenths and then subtracting five and six tenths more. If I just take the whole numbers and visualize it this way, what I would be seeing is this. Here's zero, I'm at negative two, I'm gonna subtract five and end up at negative seven. There's my estimate right there, okay? So in other words, you should know this. First of all, the outcome is negative. Second of all, you're gonna be adding these two numbers based on our visualization here. So when I do this in the calculator, okay, I'm gonna go two and five tenths plus five and six tenths equals and if you see, this is what I get. I get 8.1, 8 and 1 tenth. But here's the thing. We already determined it's gonna be a negative number. So we have to remember that when we put this in, it's a negative 8 and 1 tenth. And that's it, okay? So there was a lot of different strategies we used, a lot of different things I've taught you guys already. And you need to make sure that you get these down by practicing these problems within the Excel and on the worksheet that I give you. Okay? All right, let's look at the next one. Again, I evaluate. I notice right away, just like our first problem, I've got two signs in. Only this time, the signs are the same, so it's going to be positive. I also realize that I have a decimal and a mixed number. So I need to turn them both into decimals in order to be able to solve this problem. So I'm going to write the negative 4 and 4 tenths. Okay. I've determined that these two negatives make a positive. I have a one as my whole number, and I'm going to put a decimal. Now, for most of you, you already know this, right? One divided by two. Okay. I'm going to do it so you can see it. Okay. One divided by two, because every fraction is a division problem. I talked about that already, and you've probably heard me say it a bunch of times in class already. This equals 0.5. Okay. So that's what I put below here, 0.5. Now here's my further evaluation. I look at this again. I've got two terms. I've got a negative four and four tenths, and I've got a positive one and five tenths. 
I should know, based on this, that my outcome is going to be negative because my negative number is larger than my positive number. So I'm going to put a negative here. I should also know, based on the visualization of the number line, I'm starting at a negative 4 and 4 tenths. Okay? So in other words, a negative 4, right? And then there's 0 here. And I'm going to add 1 and 5 tenths. Okay? There's my visualization. So I should realize that I need to subtract these numbers in order to get the correct answer. So in other words, when I subtract them, I get a negative 2 and 9 tenths. Guys, the biggest thing here is I'm allowing you to use calculators, but you have to use common sense. You have to be able to go through and realize my outcome is going to be negative, okay? That I need to subtract these two because of the visualization. If you don't realize that, you have no way of checking what you got on the calculator in your head, okay? And if you can't check it, then you don't know if you have the right answer or not. Okay, let's go to the next one. This one, I don't have to worry about going through and combining signs. It's just two different terms, a negative 135 and 4 tenths, and a positive 78 and 1 half. So I just need to turn this one into a decimal. So I'm going to go like this, negative 135 and 4 tenths, okay, and then plus 78, we've already determined 1 half is 0.5. Okay, so again, I separate the terms. I realize my negative is the larger one, so I'm going to put a negative here. And again, I have to subtract these. And then when I subtract them, I get 56 and 9 tenths. Okay? So we have to actually understand this and be able to visualize those number lines in order to make sure we get the correct answer. I'm going to allow you to use calculators, but you should have an estimate in your head or an idea in your head whether it's going to be a positive or negative outcome, and should it be a less or more. Okay, so adding and subtracting the uh, different terms. Okay, let's go to our next one. On that last one, I'm going to go back just for a second. If you don't have it all written down, pause it right now and then go through and read it. Okay, all right, let's go to the next one. Okay, now this one is about two divers. Now, I already wrote the problem up here. Okay, so they're talking about two divers. They're below sea level. So I'm going to give myself a visualization. Here it is right here. I've got sea level, right? And I've got one diver that is 25, oops, what do you mean? 25 and 5 tenths below sea level. So they're below sea level, right? But the other one is deeper. It's 40 and 75 tenths below sea level. What they want to know is what is, and I'm going to do this with a color, what is the difference? What is this right here? They want to know how much deeper this one is than this one. So that means I have to subtract to them. So when I write out this equation, it's going to look like this. It's a negative 40 and 75 hundredths, right? And we need to subtract a negative 25 and 5 tenths. Now, based on what we've done already, okay, based on what we've done already, you should realize you've got two signs right here. This becomes a positive, okay? So it's a negative 40 and 75 hundredths plus 25 and 5 tenths, okay? Now, first of all, we got two terms. The larger one is the negative, so we should have a negative outcome. We also know that this is negative, this is positive. If we're looking at a number line, we start way over at 40 and 75 hundredths. When we add, we go this way. So we're subtracting these terms, okay? And when I subtract them, it turns out that I get 15 and 25 hundredths, okay? In other words, he's 15 and 25 hundredths feet deeper, okay? Okay, so hopefully that made sense. All right, here's our last problem. Now, I'm only showing you part of Excel 9, okay, because I want you guys to really understand how this works, okay? You need to be working out these problems yourself. If you don't get it right, you hit similar question, go back, or you do, do the help me. If you're there in class, you're asking me, okay?
but I wanted to do a refresher on this. I wanted you guys to realize when they're doing this problem, here's what it looks like. These lines right here are absolute value. In other words, how far are these numbers from zero? So even though you've got a negative 11 and 96 hundredths, this is actually how far is 11 and 96, a negative 11 and 96 hundredths from zero? Well, it's 11 and 96 hundredths. And then this is plus, and how far is 13 and 92 hundredths from zero? Well, it's 13 and 92 hundredths. Now it's a fairly simple problem, right? We just go through and add these two together on the calculator. First of all, we know it's going to be positive, correct? Okay, and then we know that it, when we add them together, 25 and 88 hundredths. That is our answer. Notice how it's positive and it's larger than the both of these because we're adding them together. Okay, guys, if we do the visualization on it, I'll just take it and round these. So let's say this is 12 and this is 14. What we're saying is our visualization, 0, we start at 12 and we add, since we're adding, we're going to the right, 14 more. By adding 14 more, we would get 26. That's our estimation. Is our answer pretty close to 26? Yeah, it's really close. So we know we probably have the correct answer. All right, guys, if there's anything here you don't understand, make sure you ask me in class. I will definitely answer any questions you have. All right, good luck.